Welcome back. To conclude probability concepts, we discuss two topics that can be useful in solving investment problems. We start with Bayes' formula, the study of what probability theory has to say about learning from experience. For a start, let's have a quick recap of the total probability rule that we've learned earlier. Given events A and A complement, which are mutually exclusive and exhaustive, we can find the unconditional probability of an event B using the total probability rule. Applying the multiplication rule, the equation can be restated as such. The total probability rule can be applied to multiple events. So in this case, if A1, A2 and A3 are mutually exclusive and exhaustive, we can find the unconditional probability of B by summing up the three conditional probabilities. We've gone through this example earlier where we use the total probability rule to find the unconditional probability that the Dow Jones will go up in any given month. By summing up the known probabilities into the total probability rule, we get an unconditional probability of 0.55. This means that the likelihood of the Dow Jones going up in any given month, regardless of interest rate movements, is 0.55. In this example, we're using our estimations on the probabilities of interest rate decisions to help us estimate the probability of the Dow Jones going up. How about we reverse this process instead? Let's say there's a group of insiders who have a good guess of the central bank's interest rate decision for the following month. So they will front run the market this month before the actual interest rate announcement in the following month. This means that by studying the movement of the Dow Jones this month, we can estimate the probability of a particular interest rate decision in the following month. For example, we're at the end of the month and the Dow Jones went up this month. Can we estimate the likelihood of a rate cut decision in the following month? Yes, we can. What we have here is the set of prior probabilities before we have any information. So let's say the month is over and we have information on how the Dow Jones performed for the month. This is new information that we can use to update our probability. Let's look at this pictorially. Given that we know that B is true, our scope is narrowed to this set of outcomes. So what we want to find is this joint event where B and A2 are both true. The probability that we want to find is that given B is true, what is the probability that A2 is true? This is the probability of A2 given B. Remember the multiplication rule? We know that the joint probability of A2 and B is the product of probability A2 given B multiplied by the unconditional probability of B. Rearrange the formula and we get closer to solving our problem. We know that joint probability is commutative. So this term can also be joint probability of B and A2. We apply the multiplication rule again on this term. Can you spot all the known prior probabilities we can use to update our probability model now that we know that B is true? We have the probability of Dow going up given an interest rate cut. We have the unconditional probability of a rate cut. And we have the unconditional probability of the Dow going up. Plug all these figures in and we get the probability of 0.07. What is the significance of this? Prior to having the information of Dow Jones going up, we can only estimate that the probability of a rate cut is 0.05. Given the new information that the Dow has gone up, we're able to update our estimate to a probability of 0.07. This is a demonstration of Bayes' formula where we update the probability of an event based on new information. So over here, the event that we're interested in is the decision to increase interest rate and the new information that we use to update the probability is the information that Dow Jones has gone up for the month. Let's have a short practice on Bayes' formula. Robert Holmes estimates that the probability of a buyout of Pinnacle is 70%. If it does, there's an 80% chance that the stock of Pinnacle will go up. So if there's no buyout, the chances that the stock will go up 
is 55%. Given that the stock of Pinnacle went up, what is the updated probability of a buyout? Using Bayes' formula, pause the video now to work out your answer. And we're back. It's not necessary, but sometimes drawing a tree diagram can help in problems like this. We have probability of B given as 0.7, hence the probability of no buyout is 0.3. Also, the probability of the stock going up given a buyout is 0.8. Therefore, the probability of the stock going down given a buyout is 0.2. Probability of the stock going up given no buyout is 0.55. The probability of the stock going down given no buyout is therefore 0.45. We can compute the joint probabilities of the various combinations using the multiplication rule. Bringing up Bayes' formula, how do we determine which is the event and which is the new information? The answer is quite simple. The event is the unknown. In this case, the buyout is the unknown at this point. Therefore, the event is B. The information is something new that we want to factor in. Given that we have information that the stock went up and we want to factor that in, the new information is therefore U. The probability that we want to find is B given U and we can apply the Bayes' formula to calculate it. Looking at the required terms, we have all of them except for the unconditional probability of U. We can use the total probability rule to calculate it by summing the two joint probabilities in which the stock went up. So given we have all the terms we need, plug in the figures and we get an updated probability of a buyout of 0.77. So, given that the stock has gone up, we now have a higher confidence that the buyout will materialise. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At PrepNuggets, let us do the hard work for you.